Sirens alert communities of imminent flooding. Farmers grow drought-resistant crops as poor rainfall dries the land. And roofs are painted white to deflect the heat. The world is taking concrete steps in financing initiatives to respond to the challenges of adaptation and resilience. There are clear examples of how governments, public development banks and the private sector are coming together to mobilise finance and accelerate action. And the Global Centre on Adaptation believes COVID-19 presents a watershed moment to do this. We have to invest in climate adaptation now. Why? Because it provides a triple dividend. It's good for the climate, it's good for the economy, and it's good for our health. That's precisely what the Global Center on Adaptation is doing. We're investing and scaling adaptation action across the globe with a specific focus on Africa. We're working with the African Development Bank and the African Adaptation Initiative to support the continent's leadership. This is the time to build forward better. Africa, which accounts for a tiny fraction of total carbon emissions, welcomes this greater global attention on adaptation and resilience. And the African Development Bank is stepping up its commitments. Prioritizing resilience in Africa is therefore an imperative. Accordingly, the international community must pay more attention to resilience building, which also makes economic sense, considering that investments in resilience are projected to yield benefit to cost ratios of between 2 to 1 and 10 to 1. Access to climate finance to at scale is key to building resilience in Africa. This is an area ideally suited for public development banks intervention. This year alone, Africa needs 7 to 15 billion to address its climate impacts in addition to the 114 billion to deal with economic impacts of COVID-19. Yet, only 57 billion has been mobilized for the continent to date. On its part, the Africa Development Bank has made excellent progress with regard to climate finance. In order to generate more funds, multilateral banks are using innovative financial instruments. The EBRD, for instance, has issued the first ever Climate Resilience Bond. We are proud of the $67 billion of financing for climate resilience that the multilateral development banks, including EBRD, have provided over the past decade. However, this is not sufficient. Instead, we need to raise our ambition and unlock the potential of financial markets. And multilateral institutions, such as the EBRD, can play a vital, catalytic role. Last year, the EBRD issued the first ever climate resilience bond, raising $700 million from capital markets for climate resilience investments across our region. And we intend to replicate these issuances on a regular basis. With this experience, we stand ready to work alongside others to build a marketplace for innovative financing instruments, such as the mentioned climate resilience bond. And we are delighted to work alongside the Global Centre on Adaptation and the Climate Bonds Initiative to further this important area of financial innovation. The private sector is showing strong leadership, such as through the newly launched CCRI, the Public-Private Sector Coalition for Climate Resilient Investment. CCRI is an organization composed of over 50 uh, public and private member organizations from across the value chain that are interested in addressing climate resilient investment. These projects will generate optimum climate risk adjustment returns in both the developed world and in emerging economies. So in this way, CCRI will generate and mobilize client smart capital that will produce more resilient investments, more resilient assets that will protect lives, livelihoods, and incomes for exposed population both in the years and the decades to come. 
In 2017, the INSU Resilience Global Partnership for Climate and Disaster Risk Finance and Insurance was created to bring together countries, civil societies, international organisations, the private sector and academia to help vulnerable communities. Under the Insure Resilience Global Partnership, we have been supporting programs in over 75 countries with more than half a billion euros to scale up climate and disaster risk finance and insurance solutions embedded in comprehensive risk management. With our Vision 2025, the joint work plan of all partnership members, we want to provide protection for 500 million poor and vulnerable people by 2025. The partnership has built strong alliances with the private sector and the Insurance Development Forum, with uh, represents key stakeholders from the insurance and reinsurance industry. In order to meet the increased demand for our partners, I'm happy to announce that Germany is increasing its funding for the Insure Resilience Solution Fund by another 10 million euros for the next two years. This will allow us to expand the support for innovative and high-impact risk financing solutions. Alliances between the public and insurance sectors are already delivering results in disaster risk management. Insurance companies are concretely developing projects. They are financing open source risk modeling tools and co-investing with BMZ in the financing of the technical assistance program. They also maintain their offer of 5 billion US dollars in risk capacity. Concrete results have already been delivered. We've launched our first project to create a flood and earthquake insurance program for Peru's public schools. This has the potential to provide coverage for up to 50,000 schools and will incorporate Build Back Better standards into reconstruction. It will also leverage innovative image recognition technologies as a key part of managing these public assets. It also sets the course for securing other public assets such as hospitals, bridges and roads. The Insurance Development Forum is a public-private partnership led by the insurance industry and supported by international organizations, including the World Bank and the United Nations. Our aim is to extend the use of insurance and related risk management capacities to support resilience building and also provide protection for people, communities, businesses, public institutions that are vulnerable to disasters and associated economic shocks. We are committed to the Insure Resilience Vision 2025 and the objective to provide insurance coverage for 500 million people by 2025. As part of this endeavor, we are also committed to supporting the provision of better risk information, which is central to the work of the insurance industry. We are also committed to working across both the public and the private sector to develop new kinds of innovative disaster risk financing tools that will help us to support response to these events in a much more reliable and cost-effective way. Successful adaptation needs to reduce the vulnerability of farmers and requires greater efficiency in the use of water. And the AFD is announcing a new coalition for this. As described by the IPCC, the greatest risks of global warming relate to water. Water resources are under pressure. Billions of people are lacking proper access to water and sanitation with impacts on health, economy and the environment. The COVID-19 pandemic is a brutal reminder of the need for such basic services. As water drives resilient countries, we are calling all public development banks, whether multilateral, bilateral or national, to develop financing for water and sanitation and to foster cooperation among them. A working group will be launched during the Finance in Common Summit and we are inviting all PDBs to join us in order to build a water finance coalition. We count on you. And the Dutch government, in collaboration with FMO, its development bank, is urging greater collaboration and cooperation on climate adaptation. COVID-19, climate change and conflict force us to think in a new way about development. The post-COVID recovery should better resist future shocks and enhance resilience, while putting the most vulnerable first and bringing us closer to achieving the SDGs and the goals of the Paris Agreement. 
Investing in climate adaptation supports this through enhancing resilience and reducing inequalities. The Dutch government puts climate adaptation high on its agenda. I want to share two examples with you. First, the Dutch Fund for Climate and Development. It finances business opportunities for climate adaptation in vulnerable landscapes. And second example, January 25, the Netherlands will host the Climate Adaptation Summit with the ambition to inspire larger investments from private and public actors worldwide in climate adaptation. You're welcome to participate and to contribute. Today's event marks a renewed commitment for greater collaboration ahead of the Climate Adaptation Summit in January 2021. As countries look forward to rebuilding after the COVID-19 pandemic, recovery plans in this decisive decade must include more investment and real action on climate adaptation and resilience.